Hey, welcome back to Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again today, talking about patients who have suffered thermal burns. And in particular today, I wanna to talk to you about the big red flags that spring to my mind when I'm actually going out to these cases and then when I arrive on scene and I start treating the actual patient as well. So of course, we've got our regular sort of suite or list of things we like to do for these thermal burn injury patients. We like to irrigate the wound, the burn, sorry, we like to cover the burn, we like to provide adequate analgesia. And of course then we like to keep the patient warm after that as well. But on top of those things, things that I really look for in case information and also when I arrive on scene, I start actually assessing the patient, big red flags for me. First of all, is there any information or any signs that this patient has an airway burn, which then turns the definitive management of this patient's airway into a time critical task be that in the pre-hospital environment or in hospital. So that's the first thing, airway involvement. Second thing is, is there information or actual physical pattern of injury indicative of a blast injury? Or indeed, circumstances or information coming off scene to actually say that has this patient also suffered a blast injury? In which case, well, yes, we're treating the thermal burn, but we're also potentially treating penetrating and blunt trauma to the torso. So that's the next big thing, airway involvement, blast injury, Third thing is, has this patient inhaled any toxic gases? Have they been uh, trapped in a house or in a building fire? So we need to treat them as well. And finally, the fourth big point is, does this patient actually have injuries that require treatment at a specialist burns unit? And you'll know your protocols, no matter what service or geographical area you work in, your service will have protocols that say, this patient needs to be transported to a burns unit. So there are the four big red flags for me, things I'm thinking about on the way to the case, things I'm thinking about when I'm actually looking at the patient. So yes, we need to treat our thermal burn injuries, but we also need to be thinking about other things that are going on for this patient. Airway, blast injuries, possible inhalation of toxic gases, and then finally, does the patient's burn injuries mandate that they get transported to a burns unit? So in Paramedic Project, thanks for joining us once again. Please join us in the next two episodes where we'll be talking about common pitfalls in the management of thermal burn injury patients. Thanks for joining us.